Are you the key master? Yes. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're ranking all five Ghostbusters films from worst to best. We're not including Ivan Reitman's Evolution, even though it's basically a Ghostbusters remake. Can I tell you something else? What? Buster makes me feel good. Know. Makes me feel good. Number five, Ghostbusters 2016, AKA Ghostbusters Answer the Call. What do we think of these Ghostbusters? Are they to be taken seriously? And Ghostbusters, that, that is not our name. They can't just make up a name I and just call with us. Martin Heiss earlier. Oh, He's okay. with the... Before anyone even saw the 2016 Ghostbusters reboot, the public had virtually made up their minds. Some denounced the film for taking place in an alternate reality with new Ghostbusters. The power of pain compels you! Ow! Meanwhile, the original cast got roped into cheesy cameos not even as their iconic characters. Look, I don't go to Chinatown, I don't drive wackos, and I ain't afraid of no ghosts. Others boycotted for sexist and racist reasons, unable to fathom the idea of female Ghostbusters. And thus ensued one of modern cinema's most toxic and dumbest controversies, which was only intensified by an equally insufferable election year. In retaliation against the trolls, various critics were compelled to support the film, which earned mostly favorable reviews. That's right, we all did it. Well, uh... What what did you do, Kevin? I did a lot. Now that the dust has settled, we can safely say that Paul Feig's film isn't nearly as bad as YouTube commenters made it sound. That said, it isn't anything special. We're doing important work. Hey, look at that beauty! Woo! <laughs> Wait a minute, what did you do to my uncle's hearse? I fixed it. While Melissa McCarthy, Kristen Wiig, Leslie Jones, and especially Kate McKinnon do what they can, the jokes are hit and miss at best, with an over-reliance on improv. I'm tired. No, no, no. Listen. I'm just gonna go ahead and take off. How about that? The story is another copy-and-paste job, with a villain who's completely forgettable until he takes over Chris Hemsworth's body. Oh, man. Kevin, come on, Rowan, get out of him! Thanks for the upgrade. Feig brings a vibrant visual eye to the set pieces, although the R-rated comedy king feels restrained by a PG-13 rating and an emphasis on entertaining kids. No! Oh! No! On that note, kids who are just being introduced to Ghostbusters will probably enjoy the film fine, but there's little for longtime fans. It's not one of the worst reboots ever made. As far as Ghostbusters movies go, though, you can afford to miss this call. <laughs> Number 4. Ghostbusters Frozen Empire I've been waiting 40 years for this. Hot off the success of the previous film, Frozen Empire continues to develop the next generation of Ghostbusters while also bringing more familiar faces into the fold. You the weird guy who buys strange old things? Correct on both counts. Buddy, you just hit the jackpot. Dan Aykroyd is prominently featured as a mentor figure, while Ernie Hudson and Annie Potts are given time to shine as well. Even William Atherton makes his long-awaited return as Walter Peck, who remains the apex of movie snobs. The Ghostbusters are finished. Right. Well, overruled. Sustained. Thank you. Somewhat unsurprisingly, Bill Murray only appears for a couple of major sequences. Every moment he's on screen, though, it's classic Peter Venkman. Heads up! All dark and horny at 12 o'clock. Beyond the throwbacks, Frozen Empire continues to evolve the franchise with new threats, new comedic relief, and creative new ghosts. Not just ones to bust, but ones to befriend as well. Buster makes me feel good. Makes me feel good. An engaging rapport emerges between McKenna Grace's Phoebe and a teenage ghost played by Emily Allen Lind. Whereas most of the ghosts in this series have emphasized the frightening and bizarre, their dynamic touches upon something deeper, exploring where humanity and the supernatural intersect. It's the most fascinating element in an otherwise good Ghostbuster sequel. The exposition can get heavy, and the story doesn't have the emotional core of its 2021 predecessor. Ghostbusters, what do you want? Where Afterlife kept matters fairly small, though, Frozen Empire delivers the large-scale spectacle we expect. Melnitz in uniform! Yeah! Director Gil Kennan does so without losing any of the humor, charm, or heart. Even if you go in a cold cynic, you're sure to come out feeling like a kid. Number 3. Ghostbusters 2 You're the best! We're the beautiful! We're the only! Ghostbusters! 
Debuting five years after the original, Ghostbusters 2 was not only seen as a disappointment, critics acted as if the filmmakers personally slimed them. You know, my dad says you guys are full of crap. Jason, Well, some gosh. people have trouble believing in the paranormal. No, he just says you guys are full of crap and that's why you went out of business. Bill Murray felt the sequel merely existed to make money, only signing on due to a promising pitch that didn't translate into the finished film. This made Murray even more reluctant to star in Ghostbusters 3, despite Dan Aykroyd's attempts to resurrect the franchise. That's all the time we've got for this week on World of the Psychic. Next week, though, give me Ira. Hairless pets. Weird. After years of being a punchline for lazy sequels, Ghostbusters 2 has seen a reevaluation, with many arguing that it isn't so bad. If anything, the general consensus is that the sequel is actually good enough. Let me tell you something. I love you. Yes? Yeah. Well, I love you too. <laughs> We're not going to act like the criticisms surrounding Ghostbusters 2 aren't still valid. It's the same story, with several plot points repeated for no reason. Seriously, did everyone in New York just forget the ghosts exist? For all of the rehashing, though, a fair deal makes this sequel stand out, such as new additions like Peter McNichol, expanded roles for Rick Moranis and Annie Potts, and a villain with Max von Sydow's voice. Fans will recognize February 14, 2016 as the day the world was supposed to end. In addition to other memorable lines like free balloons, the film is full of creative imagery, from the creepy ghost nanny to the Ghostbusters controlling the Statue of Liberty with an NES Advantage controller. Yeah, the message about positivity never quite materializes, and a baby's presence reflects the franchise's descent into family-friendly territory. We can't say that it's great, but it makes us feel good nonetheless. Chills down your spine, your heart fills with fright, not filled by the things that go bump in the night. Number 2. Ghostbusters Afterlife Ghostbusters 2 and the 2016 reboot lean toward children, with much of the first film's adult humor missing. Anyway, I'll embrace it. Ironically, the most adult film in the franchise might be the one that shifts the focus to kids. Returning to the original's continuity, Ghostbusters Afterlife is about passing the torch. This is reflected behind the scenes as well, with director Jason Reitman stepping in for his father, who died a few months after the film's release. It's the loss of Harold Ramis that looms over the surprisingly poignant story, which centers on Egon's estranged family. This is my father's place. Hi. 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 McKenna Grace and Finn Wolfhard bring new life to the franchise as Egon's grandchildren. As they learn about their grandfather's ghost-busting past, his daughter, played by Carrie Coon, learns to forgive. Amid the grief, there's room for humor, much of which comes from Paul Rudd as a science teacher. <laughs> Yet Afterlife puts more emphasis on the franchise's supernatural horror side, which isn't a bad thing. It has the essence of a dark 80s kids movie, which is fitting given when the original was made. The filmmakers essentially borrow the best elements of Stranger Things right down to Wolfhard's casting. Has this ever been clean before? Not by me. Afterlife doesn't stray too far from its roots either, seeing Dan Aykroyd, Ernie Hudson, and even Bill Murray suit up for a finale that honestly got us a little teary-eyed. While draped in our nostalgia for the first film, Afterlife still takes chances that ultimately deliver. Even if it's not the Ghostbusters sequel we always wanted, it's one we didn't know we wanted. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Ghostbusters Before 1984, most people associated the name Ghostbusters with the 1975 Filmation sitcom, which led to some copyright issues. That's just one reason Ivan Reitman's film shouldn't have worked. One of the intended stars, John Belushi, died during the scripting stages, being immortalized through Slimer. <laughs> Aykroyd's original script treatment was seen as too serious and ambitious, with Reitman bringing the premise down to earth. Wow! This place is great! When can we move in? You've got to try this pole! I'm going to get my stuff. 
Ramis helped flesh out the script, while Reitman encouraged the cast to improvise, playing to Murray's strengths. Even with comedic talent in spades, you wouldn't expect SNL humor to blend with ghosts, demigods, and giant marshmallow men. Against all the odds, Ghostbusters achieved a balance that's never been replicated, juggling comedy, horror, romance, and creativity. Are you a god? No. Then... Was complicated, but the central characters were simple and incredibly likable. The stakes were high, yet the Ghostbusters treated their job like a casual day at the office. Do you believe in UFOs, astral projections, mental telepathy, ESP, clairvoyance, spirit photography, telekinetic movement, full trance mediums, the Loch Ness Monster, and the theory of Atlantis? Uh, if there's a steady paycheck in it, I'll believe anything you say. The effects were state of the art, for the time at least, without ever overshadowing the character dynamics and jokes that kids probably shouldn't have repeated around their parents. Is this true? Yes, it's true. This man has no dick. For all the immature moments, Ghostbusters had an adult edge with legitimately scary imagery and an atmospheric portrait of New York. Few could have predicted that Ghostbusters would become the highest grossing comedy of its time, which might be why the film succeeded. The production was an experiment that paid off, with little studio interference or pressure to recapture what worked in the past. We can't say the same about every sequel, but the original still has us quoting dialogue and busting to Ray Parker's theme song 40 years later. Which Ghostbusters movie is your favorite? Let us know in the comments. We're the Ghostbusters. We're clever, courageous, and strong. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.